Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our show, our health talk today. I am Dr. Niru Prasad with my background, pediatrics, emergency medicine, and urgent care, affiliated with Henry Ford Health System, St. Joe, Oakland, and Bowman. The theme of our health talk today is very, very interesting. It is about what we have learned three years later. Our guest speaker is Dr. Chris Shave, PhD, and he has got so many of his things, accomplishment, that I will let him introduce you guys on air, and then we will we will start. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Doc. How are you? <laughs> I am fine. It has been a long time. Yeah. You took a break, didn't you? Yeah, I've been pretty busy for the summer, summer and summer. the fall, so right. glad we can get yeah. back before the year ends. Can you please give your introduction to our viewers? Absolutely. Good uh, morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Dr. Chris Shreve, and I've uh, been in private practice uh, for many years, and since COVID, I've been at home running yeah. my practice, and uh, so I'm working on books and lecturing and and uh, all those kind of things, just kind of taking it easy as the needs of mental health practitioners has yeah. escalated and we're yeah. very busy folks today. Yeah. Don't we all need mental health? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I need it myself. <laughs> absolutely, and I think it's great that many people are recognizing Recognize the need for mental health for and mental. coming out from behind the shame and the stigma and getting help. So but it's a good time, is, good time for people you know, seeking that is, services. That yeah. is true, Chris, yeah, it's very good time. So I still remember the day when we had this COVID thing started, you know, right. COVID. Um, we talked together, and the next day, they, they put it like an... The world like shut a, down the next world day. world shut down, <laughs> yeah, right. working at uh, work, and they said, everybody going home. Yeah. So can you describe that day? Yeah, I remember that day very yeah, vividly, three years ago, March 2020. You yeah, know, we yeah. had uh, talked about doing our show. Well, just and the before. Yeah. Yeah. The, and COVID hadn't been publicly talked about. And no, our talk did. show that morning yeah. um, talked about, you know, what we were seeing, what you were seeing. And, right. and then that night, I think uh, on the nightly news, yeah, that's when NBC it, it broke. And yeah, CNN. NBC, yeah. Yeah. So then it went wild, and then the world changed on a dime. So uh, we went into a pandemic, shut down. I remember I was in my office that Friday, and then yeah. that Monday I was on the phone doing telemedicine. So I know yeah. I was I was working, and I was I had all my assigned shift, but then I could not because they just shut down everything. Everything right? came to a stop. The whole world stopped. Whole world. Yeah. Yeah. I know. So now we're three years later, and um, our yeah. show today is really just talking about what we've kind of sure, learned, what, you know, in the last two and a half, three years. Three years yeah. later. Yeah. Okay. So we've got some slides to kind of talk about today, and so we'll look at the right. first one yeah. and just kind of talk about some of the bullet points that uh, that I found sure. in doing the research for this show today. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So we also we know that um, the the HO. Uh, WHO, the World Health Organization, yeah. uh, roughly estimates roughly 6.8 million people have died from COVID globally. Uh, 6.8 million, million people. Okay. So that's quite a lot of people that passed in the last three years. Last. Um, we have a slide. If we can get the slide up. Okay. Yeah, and, yeah. And, this and, is and, a very, I was reviewing the slides. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah, and I think people forget that COVID is still around, <laughs> and yeah. roughly a thousand people are still dying every day globally. Thousand people. A thousand nine hundred to a thousand people are estimated to still die yeah. every day today, mm. currently. Oh, you know, okay. with uh, COVID nineteen yeah. and the different variants that we have. Um, we also see that you know when twenty twenty hit, the world stopped. Industry stopped, jobs stopped, and they estimated there was roughly 225 million full-time jobs lost mm -hmm. just in 2020 when this epidemic occurred. So right. that was a big issue. So we also know that more than 225 million people or so have been fully vaccinated in America. Mm -hmm. And that's a very important factor because we realized that um, the booster shots help to prevent Right. Um, further deaths and other health complications. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, we also know that about 106 million or so have been vaccinated with at least with their first booster shot. Yeah. So that's important to know. Um, the vaccine, as I said earlier, estimated to roughly save about 18 million lives um, and 3 million uh, deaths. I mean, I'm sorry, 18 million hospitalizations and 3 million uh, deaths just from people getting vaccinated. So that's kind of what we've learned so far. 
Also, we realize that the way that we can track the viruses um, are through wastewater management, which is ironic. That came out of research in terms of trying to track the, the evolution and the progression right. of the disease. They found that they can really track Waste that in wastewater. You know, this is study I read it is came out from Boston mm -hmm. about this, you know, wastewater. Very interesting, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's, it's become a national yeah. program now. Now it is a national program. Okay. And that's going to help to prevent any further outbreaks and for us to really track the evolution and the progression of viruses in oh, yeah. the future. Because they do predict, you know, in 2024 that we could see another variant of the, uh, yeah. the COVID-19 virus. So um, we also realized that um, uh, genomic uh, surveillance is a good way to track viral evolution. Mm -hmm. um, and we also learned that N95 and KN95 masks did reduce transmission by 83% versus mm -hmm. the regular surgical masses. And I think people really, you know, were kind of wondering if the surgical masses were very protective, but we have done the research and realized that the N95s are very effective in reducing transmission. Because we learned, and I don't think we, nobody knew this in 2020, exactly, yeah, that the virus yeah, was actually know. airborne. Yeah. Right, and so the viruses, uh, we, we thought that they were spreading in, in particles, but what they realized this year is that the virus is, mm -hmm. uh, the virus is actually airborne. And that was a new discovery that we yeah. found out. So. so so, this is great, you know, all those data that, uh, of course, it is hard to remember. We worked before on the Delta Omicron, mm -hmm. yeah, but now it is surging to another variant. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And again, with people getting vaccinated, that's going to help to reduce the amount of transmission right. and to help stop and slow down the spread of these different variants that are going to happen just because that's the way viruses work. Mm -hmm. You know, they mutate and they change into a different form. That's why it was so difficult to treat HIV for, you know, 20 years because right. every yeah. time a person got the virus, it would mutate to a different type of virus. Right. So right. the medications weren't effective for the old strain you know, so they had to create new medications for the new strain. So that's the same thing that we're dealing new with. New mutation. With, yes. So that's yeah. the same thing we're dealing with with COVID-19. It's really nothing new in viral uh, yeah. technology. You know, it's just the way that viruses mutate and, and, and spread. So we've learned that definitely from the last three years in studying COVID-19. Let's look at our next slide and see what else we've learned. Mental health. Yes. That is the important, important part. Well, you know, that's yeah. kind of my sector and, you know, the area Mental that I kind of health. plot out at. And, you know, I was very concerned when I started to see a number of patients starting to come in in 2020 and it's, are still coming in for COVID-related mental health effects. Mm -hmm. um, not just the long haulers medical effects, yeah, but also right. the effect of mm -hmm. mental yeah. health. Yeah. And I have a patient right now, he's been off work for over a year because he has unstable blood pressure mm -hmm. because of the effects of COVID. And uh, so you have a lot of people in very different places now dealing with their mental health and or medical challenges from right, COVID-19. Yeah. So we also uh, found that the opiate you know, crisis escalated. All drug use increased during this time. Alcohol rates increased. Um, many people in America, as many as 90 people, 90 percent of American population felt mm. that we're in a mental health crisis today. Right. Yeah. And, you are, I agree, yes. Well, I think it's, it's true. When mm -hmm. we see the erratic driving behavior of people on the streets and folks having no patience, mm -hmm. no tolerance, a lot of anger, um, I think these are direct effects of yeah. COVID-19. And, and, of course, the mental health, mm -hmm. the anxiety, the depression, and, mm -hmm. and things associated with that. Um, another research study suggested that 47% of parents felt that the pandemic had a negative impact on their child. Right. And, and, you know, we can see that in terms of the admission rates and, you know, people seeking services. A lot of um, school counselors were just overwhelmed by the amount of mm -hmm. counseling needs for students uh, trying to just readjust back into school, trying to deal with the pressures of school, somewhat being behind academically, mm -hmm. and, you know, trying to deal with just the effects of the pandemic. I have a couple of students right now that have not really reengaged back into the classroom yet. Really? Yeah, well, they, from well, we're the seeing a lot of attendance yeah. issues, a lot of... Um, Depression, yeah, loneliness. Yeah, and, and a lot of kids are just not engaged in the school right. process. Yeah. And uh, so that's a big problem, big concern that parents are having. We also found that 50% um, of teenagers, 18 to 24, mm. are depressed. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of this is coming from the adjustments of COVID and what it impact on their life. My daughter was a senior in 2020. And like her and a million others 
uh, high school seniors at that time didn't have a graduation, right. didn't have a prom, you know, didn't have a number of activities that enriched the high school experience. Mm -hmm. And so I think a lot of uh, students also struggled with that next year getting into college, staying in college, and engaging in college because exactly. you had to be in your dorm room, isolated from your fellow classmates, mm -hmm. and taking classes online. So a lot of students had, you know, really horrible time right. dealing with. 2020 and 2021. Um, we also saw, you know, a big spike with adolescent females, and they seem to have struggled and suffered more during COVID. That's right. More anxiety, more depression, hopelessness, depression, and sadness and isolation. And I know. you know, the number one health risk in America and probably the world is loneliness. As a result, we've All learned right. that from COVID. That a lot of people. You know, were locked down, and they might have had their family systems with them in the one house, but mm. many people were also very much alone mm. during that time. Yeah. So that's kind of some of the things that we've learned. The biggest rate of um, that we've seen, the biggest concern that we've seen so far, is in the rates of overdose and suicide. Um, that has dramatically increased uh, since 2020. Oh, but yeah, suicide rate is. So high now. Well, it's doubled, roughly about 50 percent, yeah. And yeah. Uh, the alcohol-related deaths are also very high. And this mm -hmm. was also tracked from the beginning of the pandemic, and it's still being tracked today. And mm -hmm. I know with the number of patients I'm seeing, there's definitely a big uptick in, in chemical dependency. And yeah. folks using, you know, alcohol and other drugs to just deal with the stress and, you know, the devastation of not only losing loved ones, uh, financial devastation, yeah. um, just a number of things that have happened to many of and a lot of us still have not recovered. I, I don't even think we really know fully what COVID-19 and the pandemic has done to us yeah. in terms of our psychology. Our, Worldwide, yeah. not even just America. Yeah. It's all over the world. It's a global problem. Global yeah. problem, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, and I think one thing that, you know, I can certainly attest to that probably, and I think this number is probably a lot higher now, this is a 2021 statistic, but I would imagine a probably, this statistic says 40% of all mental health services were provided telemedicine through the, you know, technology. Mm -hmm. I would suspect that number is higher. I would think at this point it's probably 75% mm -hmm. are receiving telemedicine services. Yeah. So, yeah, that is amazing, you know, because all this mental health issue, everything is started. It was there before, but with the COVID era, it further aggravated everything. Definitely aggravated and exacerbated yeah. all these underlying issues that Social people have. Social media plays a significant role, as as yeah. you and me know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right. Well, I think, and, you know, there's blessings and curses that we've seen in COVID. You know, for some people, you know, they had a positive, somewhat positive impact from COVID. You right. know, I, I hate to say that too loud, but, you know, aside from losing two of my best friends from COVID, mm -hmm. you know, I was able to change my practice and work remotely from various different parts oh, of the world. Okay. Right, you know, yeah. So for me, you know, it allowed me to have more freedom to still mm -hmm. provide services, but get outside of my house and go travel and work. And so a lot of people are trying to redefine yeah, that work right. balance. Those are, the, those are the positive aspects, yeah, absolutely. right? absolutely. And working from home, you know, I think yeah, it, yeah. it's a blessing, but it can also be a curse, you know. I think yeah, it's, it's yeah. wonderful to work in your house shoes and your in your you know <laughs> in your in your pajamas I but I, I think it's made us Nobody a little more lazier you. i think right. we've gotten a little uh, more out of yeah. shape lack we're, of exercise yeah, lack of exercise <laughs> we're not walking i realized i, know, I wasn't yeah. walking at all i know because and you were sitting in a chair all day, chair all day. Pajamas, right i don't even have to drive to the office anymore <laughs> i just have to walk I down know, the steps yeah. and walk into my office I know, so I know. so and uh, that's during the covid depression i authored my book Yes. Because there was nothing else to do. Right. You cannot go to right. work, cannot talk to. So I said, okay, this is a good time. Exactly. To I think I finished mine as well. The you second finished year. yours, yeah. and then I finished yeah. mine. The first year, I was in shock, I think, like everybody else. I think right. we were just trying to deal with what's going on, yeah. how to stay alive, mm -hmm. you know, how to stay healthy. Um, and, you know, so I, I went in, I think a lot of people went in shock and yeah. stayed in shock for that first year. Yeah. And uh, so I finally kind of came out of it, you know, because I had patients to still service. I didn't skip a beat. I went right from my office, office to right the... to the phone that weekend. So I didn't stop. A lot of people stopped. You know, a lot of their jobs shut down. And yeah. they did have time to just, 
you know, not work and <laughs> relax. And, and I think that gets to our next slide, um, talking a little about the medical things that we've learned. Yeah. But you we, know, and as you just pointed out, you know, by sitting and working from home and, yeah. you know, being on shutdown, a lot of us got out of our routines, got out of our rhythm, and, uh, you know, just got out of our natural lives that we were living. And I think right. that what we found is that um, if you were infected with COVID-19, and many people obviously were infected, we found that if you were reinfected, I've had it twice. I don't okay. know if you've you had, had it. it twice. I had it yeah. twice. The yeah. second time was pretty mild. The first time okay. hit me pretty hard. I have a patient I talked to yesterday. Uh -huh. He's getting over it right now. Oh, okay. And it's second his third time getting it. So what we're finding with the reinfections, mm -hmm. there's a big problem. Uh, we find that if you've been reinfected um, okay. two times, three times, okay. yeah. um, I've known people that have had it. I've had a friend who's a, a pediatric um, mm -hmm. ER um, doctor, mm -hmm. and she's had it seven times. Seven times? Seven times. Most of your doctors and nurses have had it they are, three yeah, or four they, or five they times. They are the carrier of yeah, the virus absolutely. because they are subjected to it. Yeah, they're right, right there at the, at the, at the yeah, ground level. Yeah. So what we're finding now when we start to track these health issues, just like my patient, he got COVID in 21. Mm -hmm. He's still not back to work yet, and uh, his lungs are really messed up. His blood pressure is mm -hmm. uncontrollable, unstable, and so we're finding a lot of people. Um, one of my uh, friends, her significant other, died mm -hmm. of heart right. failure. Right. Uh, a young man. He was only in his early fifties uh, and mm -hmm. uh, died of uh, heart-related issues from COVID. So yeah. these things are real. These things are very real. That. Um, people are having these long-term effects. So we, we find statistically, if you've had a reinfection, you're mm -hmm. three, to, three and a half times more likely to have a lung problem. Right. Yeah. Um, three times more likely to have heart problems. Yeah. And 1.6 times more likely to have a brain condition. Brain condition, And that's yeah. what I'm finding is sort of dizziness, lightheadedness, mm -hmm. uh, equilibrium, vertigo Mild issues. Mild stroke kind yeah, of uh, thing. Migraines, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, those kind of things that, so that we're is finding. That, uh, Chris, is that brain thing, is that because of the little clots? You know, I don't think we know enough in the, yeah. Form in the carotid artery. Uh, that would be my heart. that would be my suspicion. That's kind of more in your ballpark. Um, uh, right, but yeah. yeah, that would be kind of my suspicion. Because yeah, they have done so much research work about the athletes, you know, dropping. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so we don't know. I don't know if it's going to be like a CTE kind of thing with right, the football yeah. players and concussions. Mm -hmm. But we're certainly seeing Concussion. some minor um, things picked. Pick, uh, tipping up in the research, and, you know, lightheadedness, dizziness, vertigo symptoms, migraine mm -hmm. headaches, mm -hmm. things of that sort. So, um, and then we also found, as I said earlier, the blood pressure problems. Um, if you've mm -hmm. been reinfected, um, people didn't have their blood pressure un under control during COVID because they weren't okay. seeing doctors okay. and things of that sort. And so a lot of people's blood pressures uh, oh, were really unregulated okay. during yeah. that whole three-year period. So those are some of the things we learned. Um, the other thing I found, which was very interesting, and I found this last night, mm -hmm. is that Placovid, um, the uh, yeah, medication the, to help deal with the symptoms. Uh, that is right. Yeah, we we prescribe it at the urgent care. Yeah. For you know, within first five days, it might work. It, well, I took it the second time I had it. You took and it. And I, I would have to say, I think it really did minimize my symptoms because I, I I was only really down for a couple. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but what we found, though, is that mm -hmm. um, people can actually take Placovid, um, get better, and then yeah. a week later, get sick again and oh, test okay. positive again. Oh, so okay. it's kind of a, it has a rebound effect um, okay. when you take Placovid. So, and this may be due to the strong immune effect um, that is happening when you take that right, medication. Yeah. So that's an interesting finding. So it's like, you know, you could take Placovid, get it's better, and then uh, relapse. You could get sick again. With the same strain of virus, so you will test. Po you can go from testing positive to testing negative, and then a week later, it becomes re emerging again. Yeah, yeah, isn't that yeah. weird? So, um, so we also learned that people over fifty uh, may be at risk for shingles from COVID nineteen. Interesting factor. I see a lot of those shingles commercials. You know, so I would yeah, recommend about that people. the shingles, yeah. Yeah, I would recommend if you've been infected mm -hmm. that, and you haven't had the shingle vaccine, that I would recommend to consider it. that. Right, sure. absolutely. Um, type 2 diabetes, that's just a big problem in our society. It's general. a big problem, type 2 diabetes, yes. I mean, we're eating ourselves into, you know, 
larger sizes, um, you know, that's a whole nother show. Maybe that'll be our next <laughs> show talking about, <laughs> you know, the effects of type diabetes, 2 diabetes. Yeah, rates we will do it next time because it's a whole big issue. Yeah, especially with our adolescents. With our diabetes. Yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah. with our young people. We yeah, have a lot of young people that are very, very unhealthy and very heavy. Yeah. And so that's going to, you know, um, increase their rates for type 2 diabetes. If mm. you had COVID, yeah. that even makes it more an increased risk to develop type 2 diabetes. Yeah. So that's an interesting finding as well. Um, and uh, with patients on uh, dialysis, I have a friend of mine, one of my best friends, he's on dialysis uh -huh. in Florida, and uh, that's an important factor that he stays vaccinated, keeps his vaccines up to date. Because, yeah. you know, you're going into these clinics and there's blood-borne, you know, blood -borne products. Blood-borne pathogens. Yeah, pathogen. The blood-borne pathogens. Yeah, and it's so you, in you your really body. have to be careful and right. uh, maintain vaccines. And I think that's another finding that I didn't really put a slide up, but there's not some protocols regarding vaccine schedules mm -hmm. and just how to maintain our health going forward in 2024. Mm -hmm. And so I would recommend that, you know, people consider keeping their vaccines up to date because that has shown to be a very effective preventative tool for mortality, especially if you've been affected already. It's really vitally important that you do keep your vaccinations up to date up because to date, that can yeah. minimize any potential health issues down the you know, and I we did a show on yeah. smoking, vaping, smoking, and all vaping. that, but I it wasn't that. related to COVID nineteen. But it was just you know we were talking about drug yeah, addiction, right. really. Yeah, that was in addiction. Yeah, yeah we but, talked about vaping and smoking. Yeah, yeah. So that has a high incidence correlation with the COVID. Well, because -COVID. of the the implications of COVID on the lungs, mm -hmm. and when you're smoking, and especially vaping, and I've done a lot of research into vaping, and mm -hmm. I never felt. In the beginning, I thought it was a safer protocol than smoking. Yeah. But as we did our studies and we found all those contaminants in the vaping products, and I didn't really feel at that point it was even, it was safer to use yeah. vaping products. Um, I still feel that way. Mm -hmm. uh, although millions of people are using um, both nicotine and THC products as in vaping. Uh, yeah. Cartridges. Right. Yeah. And if you've had COVID and you know your lungs have been affected by COVID. Already could, lungs are affected on the top you were doing yeah. vaping, so that yeah. more burden on the lungs absolutely. tissue, right? This absolutely, was, absolutely. Yeah. Well, a lot of people's lungs were very scarred during the COVID infection. Yes, yes. And so now you're, you know, introducing smoking and vaping, I think, is much more volatile in the lung tissue than even smoking. I mean, that might be controversial. I mean, it's six in one hand and half mm. a dozen in the other. Nothing smoked is good for you. Vaping, I'm not so convinced it's good for you either, but for yeah. different reasons. They're very different combustion products. Right. So one yeah. is a smoke product at a higher temperature. One's a vape or a, a, a moisture, a, oh. a, a you know like a like a vape, like a um, a moisturized kind of a, a product. You know that oh. you're inhaling. So it's very different. Um, so, but I do think they equally cause lung damage, just for different reasons. Yeah. yeah. So those are some of the things that we've learned medically. You know, what have you seen in terms of your patients and folks same, coming in? Yeah, same thing. You know, there's a lot of problems going on in the in the middle school, high school. You know, our kids, our grandkids are at the yeah. here high school, middle school, and I can see the problems mm -hmm. they are facing. You know? As much as we try to protect them. When they go to schools, they are on their own, you know. Yeah. We don't know what friends they have. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. very hard to tell. Yeah. So this is, and so far as the grading grades, you know, like before our children, when they were at the school, mm -hmm. they will bring their grades home. And the parents, as a parents, we used to see who has what, but not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> now, <laughs> the school won't allow. Yeah, yeah. So it's a different world. It's know. a different world. They yeah, want. yeah I, I think, you know, that's why this show, I think, was important. I mean, we could have did a show on a lot of different topics. But, you know, since yeah, we started this, with the COVID-19 yeah, yeah. in 2020, I thought it was appropriate it to was kind of very, follow up, yeah. you know, three years later and see where we're at. See how it's affected the world. See how it's affected people and mm -hmm. affected how we live and how we interact. And yeah. I think we have one more slide left that kind of gets into that a little bit. Yeah. And talking about some of the social ramifications social and things yeah, that we've Yeah, I wanted learned. to ask you that, but I saw you have it in. Yeah, so well, you know, I'm a social. Yeah, impact on the activities. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, 
our world stopped. I mean, nothing in no our world. No more I mean, you know, with, with 9-11, New York came to a halt. I think America came to a halt. Right. But COVID was a global phenomenon, mm. and the world stopped. The world is stopped. You know, and so I think we're now figuring out what impact that that had on us globally in terms of, mm. you know, our psychology and our sociology and, and how we relate to people. Mm. So we found that, you know, many people, 32% felt that it disrupted their routines and their hobbies. Mm. You know, um, people couldn't, you know, just do the things that they naturally did. I think the safest thing to do was take a walk. <laughs> <laughs> by I yourself. Know, I know. Right. I heard one right. time. I heard a guest speaker who is talking about walking with the neighbors and get yeah, fresh yeah, air. Yeah. Do the you know the right. community work. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think we learn. You know, we went back to settler days, kind of. When I was thinking about the metaphor, like we went mm -hmm. back to settlers. You know, we stayed mostly in the house. We stayed right, around right. the house. Yeah, yeah. And our activities were pretty much mm -hmm. relegated to our home territory. Yeah. And we went out to the cities to just get food and mm -hmm. connect with, uh, you know, local shops. And then we went back home to the farm and we stayed on the farm. Right. It was kind of like that with COVID. We all stayed in our houses. Yeah. We stayed isolated. <laughs> we only went out when we had to. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so that's the world that we're trying to come back into, reemerge back into. And a lot of people are doing very well, you know, mm -hmm. um, in, in reengaging back into the world. A lot of people have a lot of fear and anxiety about guilt going back into the workplace. You know, mm -hmm. that was the 2021, 22 issues when people were starting to get back to work. Mm -hmm. And I had a number of people were like, can you write me a note so I don't have to go back to work? Or, I, know. You know? Uh, I know about all those, yes. <laughs> right. So write like, a note so don't yeah. have to go back yeah. to work. Yeah, but people are scared and not comfortable with being around people again. And, exactly. Uh, yeah. So there's a lot of changes in our psychology that happened. Um, we also know the impact on health, as we just talked about, loss yeah, of loved but, ones, um, depression, declining physical yeah. health, um, by balanced by relatively yeah. few positive things. You know, positive things happened for people during COVID, but I think all in all, most of it was negative. Right. You know, I Mostly don't, I don't wanna, negative yeah. than positive. I mean, I don't want to say that I can go work in China and vacation is a positive thing from COVID <laughs> when 6.8 million people died, are, are there, you yeah, know, right. because of COVID. It's kind of hard to see it as a positive, you know. Yeah. But the reality is there, it's not all bad. I mean, we learned a lot of things. I think we learned how to reconnect with family. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we learned how to reconnect with friends. I think we realize what's important. I have a number yeah. of patients who are reevaluating their work-life balance. Mm -hmm. They realize prior to COVID, they were running and chasing and, you know, working these really demanding jobs and, you know, stressful jobs trying mm -hmm. to provide the, the American dream. And they realized, you know, the American dream could go in a second if someone breathes on you and you catch it, COVID and you die. Exactly. That is right. Yeah. yeah. So we yeah. learned a lot. And I think that we're coming out of that. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I look forward to 2024. Yeah. Let us have a bright. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, we're looking bright, you know, yeah. think positive that 2024 yeah. will be a good yeah. good year for all of us. Well, right? I think it's been a, a testimony for many of us to come through this pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, now I think we're on the other side of the pandemic, and although still kind of in the pandemic, yeah. but I think we can now come back out to play, mm -hmm. um, come back and start our lives out again, and, and, and then realize what's really important. What, what, what's more valuable today? That is true. Yeah. That is true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chasing after money and prestige and all of that, I think a lot of people realize I would just like to stay at home with my family and my kids. It, exactly. And, and Chasing after right. money is is no good, you know, because you lose it in the stock market. Yeah. yeah. You have money, you put it in the stock right, market. Right, exactly. You lose. So what's important today? I think simple, a lot of people simple realize. Simple living, what, right? Yeah, simple yeah. living. That's and what I And family, do. you know, yeah, family, family, friends, and... You know, not necessarily giving away your life to a job you right. know, that may yeah, not yeah. care about you. you Work know? 50, 60 hours a week and yeah. then family gets neglected. Right, exactly. So I think a lot of people have realized, because we yeah. had enough time off the radar, away from work, to realize it may be a better way to live our lives. Exactly. And I yeah. think that's what we're doing. I know we got to kind of wrap it up, but I'm just always glad to be here with you and <laughs> I know. closing out Very 2024, good. 23. Very good. I'm so happy to have you today. And such an interesting topic we covered three three years down yeah. the road. 
and I'd like to thank our viewers for watching me on the show. I'd like to thank our producer for helping me produce this. And until I see you all, have a very safe winter and spring. <laughs>